Hi everyone, this is Jesse from Bear Flower Farm. If you don't know me, I grow in New Jersey in zone 6AB and this is my first year cut flower farming. As you saw earlier, I was in my garage preparing my soil for soil blocking and today I am going to be sowing the rest of my seed for my Snapdragon. Now, I actually started sowing my seed for Snapdragon a few weeks ago, um, a actually two days before Christmas. And so um, this is the last round that I am sowing. I already have about 260 that um, are ready in trays. And so I wanted to talk a little bit today about, first of all, you know, why soil blocking for snapdragons, the types of snapdragons that I'm growing. There really isn't just one type of snapdragon, why you should be considering different varieties to extend your bloom time. And then also just show you um, what the progression of a seedling looks like for a snapdragon going from day zero all the way to one month old. Let's first start off with this important question of why do I soil block? And so you can see over here, this tray, it literally looks like blocks of soil and that is exactly what it is. So when I first found out about soil blocking, I was hooked. Um, it was a way to start seedlings without needing to buy all of these extra trays that not only cost money, but obviously they're plastic. So I'm trying to cut down on plastic, even though the trays are going to be reusable. An even more important reason is that soil blocking is healthier for roots. And I say this because I have been container gardening for a couple of years. I live in a townhouse, so I didn't have a lot of space to do traditional gardening. And what I find is that with most pots, even if you can get a bigger pot, the roots eventually get big enough where they start circling the pot. And that's something called getting root bound. That is actually not a good thing. So I found something called smart pots, which is basically a fabric based container pot where instead of the roots wrapping around, when the root hits the, the end of the pot, meaning it hits the fabric, there's air that it feels and it naturally does something called air pruning. So rather than wrapping around, the plant actually just shoots out new roots. And it's a very similar concept for soil blocking where you don't get the roots wrapping around, but instead you get the plant shooting out new roots every single time the root has hit the edge of the soil block. And in a mini soil block, we're talking about half an inch. Um, it doesn't take that long for that to happen for most plants, but for snapdragons, they are slow to start. Um, you know, at a certain point, you kind of reach this tipping point and yes, they start growing really fast, but they can stay in these soil blocks. I feel like for a little bit over a month before you, you need to bump them up to a bigger soil block. So they actually sell different sizes. Um, for a two inch block, you can actually get a little um, indent where it will create a half inch indent and you can literally lift a, a, a mini soil plug and put it into that new soil block so that the seedling has more room to grow, more nutrients. The tray that I'm using today is actually a Costco rotisserie chicken pan. Um, we don't buy Costco rotisserie chicken, but my parents do and they buy it quite frequently. So I have them save these trays. And what I really like about them is that they have these ridges on the bottom. So it makes for bottom watering a lot easier because when you pour the water in, it obviously sits in these wells and it's able to get underneath the soil block versus having the water kind of pool around the soil block. So I find that this works really, really well. The main types of snapdragons that I'm growing this year are going to be the Costco the series, the Legend series, Potomac, and Rocket. And so, as I mentioned earlier, there's actually different group classifications of snapdragons, and they basically respond to bloom times based on how much daylight hours you have. So snapdragons are those types of flowers that basically, you know, I could have started them back in November, but it doesn't matter if they don't receive a certain amount of daylight. So based on the amount of daylight that they're receiving will signal their bloom time. And so group one, which would include the Costa series that I'm growing as well as the legend pinks they have a earlier bloom time than the potomac and the rockets so i can start my potomac and rockets at the same exact time as my cost and legend series but the legend and costa series will bloom earlier than the potomac and rocket and what this means is that you start your seedlings all at the same time for your snapdragons but you're able to stagger your blooms meaning that I'm gonna understand that I'm gonna pull out my legends and my costas, uh, you know, probably after I would say late June, and I would expect to have some more blooms from my Potomac and Rocket going into early summer. 
because I've already sewed the Costa series and the Legend Pinks that I needed, I am going to be doing the Rocket and the Potomac today. So I'm going to be doing 40 of each in this soil block tray that I had prepared earlier. But before I show you how I do it, I wanna talk a little bit about just the germination process and what you can expect um, your seedlings to look like after you know certain time frame. On the back of the Johnny seed packet, it says that germination is expected to be 17 to 14 days at 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I found that my Snapdragons were all germinating within five days and I wasn't even putting them on a heat mat. So our home temperature is set at 65 degrees and technically the soil temperature is actually a little bit cooler than 65 degrees so these guys are not having any issues germinating at a cooler temperature than what the seed packet says and where i don't have to plug in a heat mat i'm not going to so um, i've had a lot of just really good success with johnny's as a whole i did actually also seed some baker creek tall deluxe snapdragons i think those are basically like a rocket type type of series um and those did take a little bit longer but those seeds were also two to three years old so i think for the most part you know you you could experiment and see if your room temperature is enough for you to germinate but the good news is that i didn't have to allocate two weeks for just the germination time now i actually started sewing my snapdragon two days before christmas for my first batch and you know that is definitely pushing the envelope but i knew that i was gonna put a little bit of protective covering over them when i put them out in march so they would be able to withstand the elements but this seedling is exactly one month old and you can see that it's got a lot of roots coming out and it's definitely got two big true leaves including another set of true leaves that are coming out so this is what a one month old seedling looks like and you know at this stage is where it really starts taking off and i think in a week or so i'm actually going to start putting i'm, I'm going to basically put another soil block a two inch soil block and put this one into that soil block so that it has a little bit more room to grow before it goes out in another i would say month i want to show you what two weeks looks like and i did two sewings pretty close to each other so this was done on the third which makes it 20 days old so over here you can see that these are doing really really well a lot of them are having their true leaves show up and the one that i showed in the very beginning was sewn on the fifth and the germination rates on these are pretty good. Even the ones where you don't see uh, a ceiling sprout up right now, I can actually see some of them starting to peek through. So I would say that I am getting at least 90% germination rates on all of these seeds. I have a, another tray that I started on the 12th. So this is 11 days ago. And I actually had this next to the windowsill. So Snapdragon seeds do need light to germinate. Um, I just ran out of space to put them in a place where they would get some sort of daylight. So this was actually definitely cooler than 65 degrees. We've had days of just single digit degrees outside. Um, even though this is a new house, I mean, the windows are not draft free. So I would say that this was sitting at probably 55 to 60 degree temperature and so i'm just starting to see some germination so like you can see this one right over here has germinated and you can see white specks in other areas with um, a little bit of germination so now let's actually go through the process of sowing seeds for snapdragon soil blocks um, initially i really struggled with this because snapdragon seed are so small that it's really impossible for you to try to pick an individual seed up and put it into the soil block so we are going to use the toothpick method um, and i'll show you my process this is the soil blocks that i had ready from downstairs uh, in the garage and i have four blocks of 20 so 80 total and as i said before i'm going to be sowing snapdragon rocket and snapdragon potomac from Johnny's. Um, the first thing that I like to do is I like to label my uh, my blocks. So what I do is I um, I got this from work. They were throwing out all these labels, so I took them. And basically, what I do is they're really really small 
uh, labels from, I think it's, uh, it's Sables. And I will just write the name of the variety. So in this case, it is Snap Dragon Potomac. And then I'll also write the date. So today's the 23rd. And so literally what I do is I take this and I stick it on to the lip. And now I know exactly this block is gonna be Potomac. And I like to do this before I seed. And when I'm done with one block, then I make another label, go to another block, just to make sure that I know which blocks have been seeded. Because as I said, Snapdragon seed is so small, it's often impossible to tell whether or not you've seeded. And that's why there are certain blocks where I have two, sometimes even three seedlings popping out because despite my best efforts to count, I am miscounting and I can't see that, oh, there's already a seed there. This is the Potomac series. Um, I got 250 seeds from Johnny's. They arrive in this little pouch here so you don't lose them. And what I like to do is I turn the sheet upside down and I pour some onto the paper here. So kind of hard for you to see, but here, let me show you. So this is literally what the seed looks like, really small. So what I do is I take a toothpick. This is the same exact toothpick I've been using for my other sewings, I just save it. And you literally just pick one seed up. See how easy that was? I don't know if you can actually see it. And I drop it to the top of the soil block. And I count two. And this is three. And this is four. So I know that there are 20 total blocks. So if I'm on five, I'm like, wait, which one was I on? I know that five would be the second row starting from where I started. It just helps me keep track. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish the other three blocks of 20. That took about five minutes, but I'm done. So these will just go, like they'll stay here or somewhere else where they get a little bit of light for germination and stay close to room temperature. Once they do start showing a little bit of green, kind of like what I showed you over here, so you can see like a speck of green over here. Um, I've, I only see two uh, greens pop out right now, so I'm gonna let a little bit more germinate before they go under the grow light. Um, if you're like me, obviously there is some, restriction in real estate underneath the grow light. So um, that's why I don't immediately put them underneath, but if you have space, you know, by all means, put them in. Now, seedlings that go under the grow light should be about two to three inches above uh, the, the top of the ceiling. So it should be pretty direct light and they should really be under there for about 16 hours a day for them to grow strongly. Um, now, there are times where if it's really warm, by really warm, I mean like high 30s, low 40s, it's full sun, I might even take them out of the grow room and leave them outside for half an hour to a full hour for them to get that sunlight, um, but obviously not necessary. You can do it completely in the grow room. I know a lot of people are sowing lisianthus at this time of year. For me, snapdragons are the Lizzie Anthus of the winter, meaning that I feel like the the season has finally started because the snapdragons need to get started. And a lot of people don't realize that snapdragon need to be started way in advance. Um, if we had the property earlier, I would have actually overwintered these, um, meaning that I would have started these in probably like late August, September, put them into the ground for the fall and let them overwinter, probably in a high tunnel or even uncovered. Um, but obviously that's not the situation this year. So I'm starting them now. It is late January and these should be ready to go into the field in mid to, mid to late March where I can't wait to see them bloom in the late spring. So if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving me a thumbs up. It really helps our channel. And do let me know in the comments if you have any questions, what types of snapdragons you're growing this year and whether you've had any success growing them outside of soil blocks, what's your favorite way of sowing them? I would love to hear. Till then, see you next time.